Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. And I mentioned this uh, last week on the show that we've been spending a little bit of time going through the mail. And right now, probably in the past two months, we've been getting more mail about this band, seriously, than on typo negative than any other band. So obviously, I mean, Headbangers Ball is a little bit late on this one. The fan base has just been like steadily growing and growing and growing. I mean, before, for years, we've been getting Slayer, Dan, Luke, all the same stuff. And now all this typo negative mail. I mean, can you tell that the fan base has just grown a lot lately? Uh, yes, um, by the attendance at shows, uh, by the amount of fan mail that we get to our fan club, yes, we see that. Now, since it starts, like, I mean, because you started with a real underground following, but lately you've had the opportunity to go out on the road with, I mean, how many different bands, from Nine Inch Nails to Motley Crue and now Danzig. Sure. Do you think that you're winning over a lot of fans going out with, you know, those different styles of bands? Well, I think because our style is so diversified, it really... <laughs> It doesn't matter who we're playing to. You know, if people like music, then they'll either like us or hate us. Mm -hmm. You know, we fit into no one particular area, so we have a diversified crowd. Do you find that you're getting, like, different types of fans? I mean, I would think that somebody that would buy a Motley Crue record and somebody that might buy a Sisters of Mercy record, for instance, would be the typo negative. You know, are you finding that you're getting a wide, when you have your headlining shows? Yes, definitely. So you're getting, like, a whole wide variety mm -hmm. of crowds? That's why, as long as they're females, it's okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to talk about the lyrics. Speaking of females, we'll talk about the lyrics and fun stuff like that when we come back with Typo Negative. We've also got a video of them. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're back on the Headbangers Ball with Typo Negative, a band that tons of people have been writing a lot of letters about. And also, if you read some of the reviews, which actually in this band you should judge for yourself, the reviews have been good, but critics are saying stuff like, oh, these guys are so pissed off at women, and they write all these, like, you know, you know, chauvinistic songs, but what's the story? Well, if anyone has something to say like that, I wish they'd point it out in my lyrics. I don't think we're... But you, but you have some songs that talk about, like, I guess maybe you've been bitter in the past or had experiences that weren't the greatest experiences. Well, sure. There was one, one person that I was kind of angry at, but uh, everything that I said in the song was in a singular sense. And I believe anybody who can speak or read English realizes that there's a difference between singular and plural. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about women, it was just about one. It was about one person. And do you ever run into that one person? Uh, luckily, no, I haven't. And she, but does she know that, like, certain negative songs were written about her? Uh, I believe, well, it seems like everyone that I've been with seems to think that that song's about somebody. <laughs> is that I'm, good or uh, bad? <laughs> I'm not going to give anybody credit. So. Okay, we're going to play a video right now from Typo Negative, and we're going to come back and uh, find out why they covered a Seals and Crofts song. Stay tuned, we've got more Headbangers Pop, but right now, here's Christian Woman. Oh, oh. We're back on the ball with Typo Negative. The record is called Bloody Kisses. It's out in your stores right now. A lot of you have bought it. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? Now, you guys cover a Seals and Crofts song, which, of all the songs that maybe Typo would cover, you wouldn't think that was it Summer Breeze? Correct. Summer Breeze? Yep. Why Seals and Crofts? Well, uh, Summer Breeze was always one of my favorite songs. Really? Yeah. And uh, we I, wouldn't, be... I wouldn't take you guys for like a Seals and Crofts fan. Well, I was born in uh, 1962, and so I was exposed to a lot of stuff from like the 60s and 70s, you know, having five older sisters who like constantly uh, bombarded me with that stuff. So I got to like all that like soft, easy listening 60s and 70s stuff. Uh -huh. Have they heard your version of it? Yes, they have. And did they say anything about it? I mean, were they happy or? Well, they approved it. So <laughs> well, I don't even know. Okay. Are they still a band? Are they still? No, but they things? still own the copy. So they were happy. They were just like, <laughs> please, anybody record our Susan Crop song. We're going to come back and we're going to talk to Typo Negative. We're going to talk about the record, talk about touring, and uh, some more stuff. So stay tuned. But right now, here's Tool with Sober. <laughs> Hanging out with Typo Negative, and was there like one of the tours that you've been on so far that has been a favorite? Yes. Which one would that be? I would say Motley Crue. Really? Was your favorite of any of the tours? The Nine Inch Nails? Is there any really reason? Really nice or? guys. Uh huh. Yeah, fun to be. I mean, they're one of the bands that I know gets to choose any bands that open up for them, and yeah. you know, they really a lot of bands wanted that tour, and they picked you guys. So why well, I don't know, but uh -huh. they did. But the shows, the shows went good. Yes, yeah, really. We well, also went out with Nine Inch Nails. Those went good. That's uh -huh. correct, and also Jackal as well. Uh huh. So we had a good time with them. And now, what would seem like a perfect 
package is you guys dancing in God Flesh. Yeah. And that tour is still going on right now, That's right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna find out some more about Typo Negative. We're also gonna play a video from Compulsion, and we're gonna be playing something from uh, Testament. But right now, we're gonna play something from Megadeth. Here is Train of Consequences. Coming up, we've got the latest from Compulsion and Testament and Queensryche when the Headbangers Ball continues. But right now, we're still with Typo Negative. And I remember one time going to a Danzig show and somebody said, Hey man, if you, you talk to Glenn and ask him, does he bring his wolves on stage with on tour with him? And I mean, what are some of like the stupidest questions that you guys have been asked other than the four that I just asked earlier? Because um, people must have like weird ideas they see they're like, oh man, these guys are all goth, they look into this. And if, if we're vampires or, you know, if you like to drink blood and this and that. Because certain people take different messages, you know, from they see things and they think that that's the way it is, so. Mm -hmm. So those are pretty strange questions. And what would be the answers you give those people? Well, if, if I was a vampire, uh, would I answer that question? So that's why I tell them I can't answer it. Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Typo Negative, they're out on the road with uh, Danzig and Godflesh, so definitely go check them out. The record is called Bloody Kisses, and a lot of people have been writing about it, so the fan base is definitely uh, getting bigger. And then after that tour, you're planning on going out by yourself for a while? Uh, we're not sure right now. Well, we'll keep you updated. Stay tuned, we've got more headbangers following. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.